Hey, it's Keith from Outlaw Speed Shop, and I want to thank you for tuning in. As always, if you like what you see, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell to get notified of all future videos. All right, so I have a Hot Wheels Nova. This is the Gulf version, and uh, I have a couple of these. Um, I had one actually sent in from a, um, a subscriber, and another one I had actually found at Walmart. Uh, pretty cool car, rolls pretty good. Not overly enthusiastic about the stance, um, but for the purpose of what we're doing, um, I'm gonna change that. So, as always, you start off by drilling them out. The posts are pretty easy on this one. Um, anything that has a special uh, plastic base, really just, you just gotta be careful that your drill doesn't walk, but overall, they're really easy to do. Um, car's fairly detailed, it's brand new, obviously. Um, windshield's in good shape, interior, obviously in good shape. Very plain, nothing fancy. Um, the Death Proof Nova, which is what I'm replicating from the movie, um, had a plain hood, not a SS hood, so uh, like what this Gulf has, so obviously that has to change, and I had to take some creative liberties with this, because obviously we're doing this to scale, and um, the first thing I wanted to do is find some rims and tires. The car in the movie had um, Corvette Rally rims, uh, which I could not find for the life of me anywhere on any car that I have. So I'm using these aluminum monoblock wheels, and they're all the same size, which works out fine. The only issue is is the stance of the car and the rake um, was way out of proportion. So I'm going to have to trim off the bottom of the axle uh, area. I guess they're brake rotors or backing plates or whatever. Um, because when you put the monoblock wheels or a smaller wheel, uh, two things happen. A, it doesn't fill in the wheel well like it should, and B, the things I'm grinding off now actually drag on the ground. So for stance purposes, I have to grind those off um, just to try to get that perfect, you know, it's so hard when you're dealing with this stuff, trying to figure out the right stance and the right look and the right, you know, wheels are wheels. They're just hard to deal with trying to find the right combination. Uh, so since I'm kind of stuck with the monoblocks because they are aluminum, and again, I took some creative liberties here. Um, you know, I had to do what I had to do. Um, so obviously I stripped it with some citrus strip stripper, and I'm just going to go over it real quick with my wire wheel and some steel, some steel wool. This car was going flat black just like the car in the movie, so I didn't have to go crazy here. Um, but for a brand new casting, surprisingly, there was some imperfections on the... Uh, rear deck lid and on the front of the hood and a little bit on the base um, There was just some poor casting lines nothing crazy, but um, a, a quick file takes care of it uh, But yeah, this is a fun project. I'm look I I've been wanting to do this one for a while And that was a toss-up between doing the Nova and the charger um, but I've done a, a couple charges in the past um, So here I am trying to get rid of the SS hood scoops uh, which were cast in. So it's a combination of a file, um, the sanding uh, sticks, and um, then I just pretty much trying to fit it right now, see how it's all going to look. Um, I got the distance between the wheel well and the wheel, and then the bottom of the wheel, or the base on the ground. Pretty decent, I think. I had to space it a little bit. And what I did is I added a piece of axle tubing underneath the wheel, sitting in and believe it or not that gave it the perfect height so <laughs> um, part of the lure of this car is the fact that it's very well put together and in order for him to do what he does in the movie and i'm not going to give nobody's seen it i'm not going to give away too much anyways even though it's been out forever um it's very well fortified so uh, blue mini tsi customs um, had sent me a box of stuff um, a while ago, and I had this roll cage, and it's for a truck, so it's obviously took some modification to get it to fit for the Nova. Um, I had to cut a lot out of it to get it to fit, uh, but it ends up fitting, no problem, and it's perfect because it's um, it adds that 
that look that I was going for to match the car. And again, I don't have the, the separator between the driver's seat and the passenger area where he puts his uh, passengers, let's call it that. Um, however, it does, again, part of my creative liberty, um, just put it in there and make it look halfway decent and add some strength to the interior. So when I crowned down the hood scoops, I went a little too far on one of them. Uh, so I got some spot putty. I got to get the schmegmer off the top there. Um, this is stuff from Auto Body. It's just a glazing putty. You can use the Tamiya putting it putty as well. Um, I just like this stuff. It's a little thicker. It's a little easier to work with, and it seems to dry a little faster. So um, I was kind of in a hurry uh, to get moving on this. I primed it white just so I could see any imperfections. Um, again, it didn't really matter because I was going black. So <clears throat> I end up. Uh, flat blacking the base because I'm not a fan of chrome bases what I did is I had masked off the front grille and a bumper as well as the rear and I put a matte clear on it and I put it on wicked heavy and what that did is it dulled it down really really good uh, to the point where it looked worn like the car in the movie so also by putting the clear coat on it allows the paint any detail paint that you do to really stick well um, even when you overdo it, you can chip it right off with your knife. Uh, I have the worst hands when it comes to small details. I'm, I shake like crazy, uh, probably from the 8,000 cups of coffee I drink a day. Um, so I'm doing the rear, uh, reverse lights, brake lights, and then I'll detail the black. Um, I got my, um, I'm doing the headlights here. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, the paint pens work pretty good um, a lot of times I'll just do if you saw I put it in a little spot and then I'll dip my toothpick in to get the fine details that I can't get with the pen or even a brush and this is just a uh, regular ballpoint pen that I got from the craft store for uh, pen and ink type drawings uh, works really well and again because it's been clear coated uh, with the matte clear everything sticks really well as opposed to just the real cheap shiny plastic chrome look and then I'll put a little uh, black wash on the grill areas in the side markers just to add a little bit of depth to it it's um, a little bit of realism again it's the small details a bunch of small details don't seem like a big deal but when all put together it, it makes a big difference so overall so far it's looking pretty good um, the wheels again they're not movie accurate but I just think they look pretty freaking cool and they were the closest thing I had. So the tester's flat black um, was the route I went, obviously. Um, so before I paint, I always tap the holes. I drilled them out after I primed it just to, I don't know, I, think, I don't know if I forgot or whatever. Sometimes I do it right after I separate the car. But for pr um, purposes of fitment, I did it now. So now it's a matter of the decal. So I found the logo. I paste it into Illustrator. And uh, they have a little function called Image Trace. If it's a vector looking image, it's really easy to do. You create outlines. And then I'm just going to use different colors to separate so I can uh, get rid of the, the areas that I don't want. And I can manipulate the logo to the size that I want. Which, um, when I'm doing this, I'm not 100% sure on the size so what I do is I lay out the decal sheet and then I'll put a bunch of different sizes um, so that way I have some options and I'm not wasting paper and with things like Illustrator once you've put it into a vector format a it's crisp and clean so when you print it out um, you don't have any pixelation whatsoever and it just allows me to manipulate the logo as many times or the image whatever I'm working on as many times as I want and it won't degrade the image if you do that in Photoshop three four five six seven times it'll um, degrade unless you've made it a smart object so I did graphics for many years and I still do it um, on the side so this really you're looking at this at real time uh, excuse me allergies so um, this is really um, just a very simple um, tutorial kind of on what I do and how I do it and now I'm just kind of duplicating everything and then once I've done that I will 
just try different sizes. So I'll do two rows of one size, and I'll do a couple rows of a smaller size, and that gives me some options when I print it out because as many times as you measure, um, it's always good to have you know a few different sizes to work with. When you're dealing on this scale, it's really tough. So what I end up doing is printing um, printing this on regular paper, and right now it's just uh, like a black outline. I have white decal sheets. The issue is, is if you print it this way, you're going to have a white square, or you have to try to trim. So I convert it to black after I get the right sizes, and that way when I print it out, because it's going on a black car, I can be a little bit more liberal on how I cut around it because I really kind of suck working with scissors. Um, so you can see here I had a bunch to work with, and all those are extras, believe it or not. So I would primed, um, painted the car, the flat black, and I'm just going to trim it as close as I can. The only thing I really don't like about the testers or any decal sheet that's white is it leaves the edge after you cut it white. So what I do, fortunately, I got lucky because it's a flat black car. I put some flat black in the can and the uh, lid, and I'm just going to go around and touch up all the details. And once I matte clear everything, it'll get rid of the ridge where the decal was, and it blends the decal into the black from the decal into the black to the car. So um, now it's just a matter of assembly. I took and um, chromed the roll cage as you saw and I wanted to this car wasn't in the movie he drove the shit out of it and he beat it up so I took some Zandri dust from Citadel and I'm going to dry brush a little bit of that on the base and I wanted the car to look like it's been driven and again I took some some liberties here um, and especially on the front you'll see so I'm just going to kind of work some of the the dust in there. I'll also use um, some of the Tamiya powders, weathering powders. But the the Zandri dust I like is a good base. It just it really looks like sand, and it looks like you know if you can put it around the wheel wells, a little bit on the wheels, uh, places where dirt and dust would collect when you're driving. I took some soot and I put it around where the exhaust pipes were, just to um, add some depth to the rear bumper because that's what would you know it would really look that way um, so here I am now with the weathering powders I'm just kind of more layering I guess you can say there's different shades and if you're doing this on your own this takes forever to try to figure out <laughs> um, I'm not the best with weathering powders so now I got some blood from the blood gods and I put a little bit on my brush and I'm gonna use my airbrush to spackle it over the front of the car can't see it because I didn't want to make a mess all over my uh, my work area but that's pretty much uh, gives it a nice effect I've tried flicking it a few times somebody suggested um, using the airbrush and that's what I'm doing but overall um, I always try to tell you what I'm gonna be doing in the coming weeks I've got this Unimog I'm working on next and it's for a gas lands build off with Matchbox Garage and Danny's Diecast Disasters that's what I started with this is what I ended up with. Uh, overall, I'm super happy with it. Um, I've been wanting to do this for a long time, and I love the way it came out. Hope you guys do too, and thank you for watching. I'll catch you on the next one.